What's up everybody? I just got back from an amazing 11 day trip to Egypt. So in this video, I wanna share with you seven essential things you need to know before you visit this ancient country. First experience that I wanna share with you about traveling to Egypt is probably the most important thing that you can know before getting to the country. And that is the fact that there's an unfortunate reality of scamming and hassling in the tourism industry right now. And it basically starts the second you land at Cairo airport. So in our experience, we were gonna take an Uber from Cairo airport, but the second we got out of the terminal, we were met with 50 or so people all asking us to take taxi rides and trying to overcharge us and just being very persistent and not taking no for an answer. We were gonna take an Uber from the airport, which we knew was a thing, but people were saying, oh, there's no Uber here. You can't take Ubers here. You have to take taxis. And they're kind of getting in our heads and hassling us about that. We eventually got an Uber, but you have to be very persistent and know what you're doing beforehand. And this does not change throughout the country. So as soon as we went to the pyramids, you've probably heard of the pyramid scammers. And that is a real thing. We got to the base of the pyramids, a place that I wanted to visit my whole life. and we're taking photos, looking around, and there's people coming up to us constantly. Every 15 seconds, someone else coming up to us, trying to sell a scarf, trying to say they'll take a picture of us for a fee, they'll show us a camel ride, extra tombs, everything. So there's always people around, and it didn't stop our whole trip. Everywhere we went, and we did a Nile River cruise, like a lot of people, and as soon as you leave the dock, there's gonna be guys all lining the dock, basically telling you they can give you a tuk-tuk ride, a tour of the city, a taxi, sell you a scarf, show you a spice market, so many different things. So be prepared to say no and make sure that you can be very firm and persistent about that or else it can dampen your experience. Just keep that in mind. And that kind of brings me on to my second point, and that's the fact that Egypt is a safe country to visit. Yes, there are people who will try and haggle you or even scam you for your money, but I kind of had a feeling throughout my entire trip that that was the only the extent of the harm and there was going to be no physical danger coming to me. And yes, I am a male traveler, but I've also spoken to solo travelers and female travelers who said the same thing that as long as you dressed appropriately and weren't way too flashy with everything, you were totally safe in Egypt. And there maybe are some pickpockets and things to look out for in major markets or areas that are super, super heavy with people. But otherwise, I don't think you're going to be ever assaulted or have major physical harm come to you. So know that in Egypt, if you're traveling in a group or by yourself, you're going to be perfectly fine. Just watch out for your wallet figuratively and sometimes if it's chaotic, literally. And then the third thing is also related to money. So a lot of money things here off the bat, but that is the fact that tipping is expected for everything in Egypt. So you have to carry small bills on you everywhere you go. So like basically, normally when you go on a trip, you're obviously gonna tip for things like tour guides, meals, all of that stuff. But in Egypt, they want you to tip for basically any small service that anyone does for you, there's a tip expected to it. So it kind of was a hard reality for me because I felt that sometimes Anytime anyone talked to me at all, I was kind of worried, like, are they going to want to tip at the end of this? Or is this helping out of the genuine kindness of their heart? And most of the time they did want to tip from it, which is a weird thing that I've never experienced before. So I have two kind of stories to go into that. And the first one is that we did that Nile River cruise. We left the dock of the boat and we were going to a restaurant. We knew where it was. We had it on Google Maps. We didn't need any help going there. It was like an eight minute walk. And we left the dock and we were met by a guy at the end who said, oh, you want a taxi? Do you want to buy a scarf? Do you want to buy a galabia? What can I do for you, basically? And we told them, essentially, we don't want anything. We're walking to a restaurant. Uh, we don't need any help. Thank you, but no thank you, basically. But he continued to follow us, persistently asking us things nonstop for blocks. And eventually we told him, look, we're going to this restaurant. We don't need your help. Thank you, but please leave us alone, essentially. And he basically just walked in. We told him what restaurant it was, and he walked in front of us the entire way. And then when we got to the restaurant, he pointed to it and was like, oh, here it is. And then he goes, okay, tip for me for helping you get to the restaurant. And we're like, well, we didn't ask you for anything. We knew where we were going. We didn't need your help. But then he was like insisting, insisting, insisting that we had to tip him because he walked us there. So that was like a hard reality to kind of deal with. And then another one was the fact that anywhere you go into the bathrooms, anywhere, the airport, the bazaars, the tourist sites, there's going to be people who are cleaning the bathrooms, people in front of the bathrooms. And every time they want you to pay small fee for using the bathroom, or if you ask someone where it is, they show you where it is and they want a fee. So it's not expensive money. It's not something that you're going to be like, oh, I'm breaking my bank here. This is really tough. It's very, normally very cheap, but it's something that you have to have small bills on you uh, to hand to people because you're going to be tipping a lot and dealing with that a lot. And that brings me on to my fourth point, and that's the fact that Cairo is an overwhelming and chaotic city if you're not expecting it or you're not used to traveling. So 
The second you get out of the airport, it's going to be super chaotic traffic everywhere. There's barely any street lights, six lanes wide, everyone's weaving in and out. And you're already going to be like, wow, this is absolutely insane. And then as you're going around Cairo to all the mosques or Islamic Cairo and the bazaars, there's people everywhere. Everyone's always coming up to you and talking to you. There's a lot of sounds, a lot of smells and things just happening all around you. And it can be chaotic and overwhelming if you're not prepared. But it is a great city and there's so much culture and history and it's something that you definitely should experience and the pyramids are there. So you're going to be in Cairo at least for a day. But know that if you go to other cities like Aswan and Luxor, it's not all like that. And it's definitely more chill in those areas. But Cairo is chaotic and something you have to deal with, but don't skip it. And that goes into my next point, though, that the best tip I can give anyone in Cairo is to use Uber and not taxis. So at the airport, they're trying to charge us 25, 30 US dollars to get a ride to our hotel. But we looked on Uber and it costs three US dollars. And Uber is generally just a safer thing overall in general. With an Uber, you have a map of exactly where you're going. You can keep tabs on where you're going. You can share your location with people. And it's much, much cheaper in Cairo. And if you're taking a taxi, it's more expensive and it's not as safe and you kind of can deal with more scams, more problems. So just know that before you go and use Uber in Cairo at any chance that you get, it's significantly better. But unfortunately, it's only available in Cairo. So if you wanna use it in other cities, it's not available, just keep that in mind. And then moving on to my sixth point, and honestly, this is another money point. So a lot of these points have to do with your money and dealing with expenses. And that point is the fact that there are many extra costs in Egypt that you should consider and leave room for in your budget if you're on a tight budget, because Basically, a lot of things cost way more or extra than I expected. So we had booked a tour uh, to go see this pyramid, Saqqara and Memphis, and we booked other tours as well in Aswan and Luxor and all of that. And none of the tours we booked, and sometimes they didn't really tell us, even though they're reputable companies, they did not include entrance fees to any of the things. Now, the fees are like 5 to $10 for each entrance, but if you add them all up and you continue to go to sites, that's going to add a lot of money onto your budget. So we got to the pyramids we had to pay to get in there, Saqqara and Memphis. And that was an extra like $25 other than the tour cost we already paid for as well. And it was the same at all the other sites. So make sure that you read the fine print of your tours to see what you actually have to pay for. And another thing is that a lot of these tours, even if they don't uh, promote it or share that, they're going to bring you to certain places where they, they kind of pressure you into buying stuff. So if you're in Egypt and you want to buy stuff, that's great. And it's very easy. And we bought some things too. It was pretty nice. But... If you don't want to buy things, you're going to be pressured into it. So on our tour to the pyramids in Saqqara, after we saw the pyramids, something wasn't in our itinerary. Our tour guide said, okay, now we're going to go take you to a papyrus painting shop and an oil and uh, perfume shop as well. So you can look around and see like the industry of Egypt and our ancient methods and all of that, which was a cool experience. But then we get to the painting shop. They show us how all the paintings are done and made. It was awesome. But then they go, okay, now look around and let us know what you want to buy. And they're kind of wandering, you're wandering around and people are watching you and on your back basically telling you to buy something, even though the tour guide said there was no pressure into it and the things are kind of expensive in terms of US dollars. And the same thing kind of happened after that painting shop, they took us to an oil and perfume shop. This one was even harder because we went into a room and this woman was selling us, was basically sampling us 10 different perfumes and essential oils that they smelled really nice and they, we were sampling all of them and it was a good experience because we got all of these different scents and aromas and it was great but then at the end she goes okay which ones are your favorites which ones do you guys like what do you want to buy and our tour guide and her are both kind of in our face about what do you want to buy do you, what do you want what do you need and it's kind of hard at that point to say oh we don't want to buy anything so you feel really pressured into buying stuff i had bought a uh, perfume for my girlfriend as a souvenir but it can be a very overwhelming experience if you're not used to that type of pressure on you so and then the final point that I want to make is that Egypt is an awesome country with so much to see. All of the ancient historical sites in general are just incredible. Absolutely a must-see in your life, bucket list destination. But that means that it also comes with so many other tourists as well. So if you think that you're going to come to Egypt and have the pyramids, have all these sites in Luxor and Aswan, the Valley of the Kings, and all these different places to yourself, that's not going to be the case. So we were met with so many other tourists at all of the sites, even on our tours. So... It's difficult to maybe get great photos, get amazing pictures and videos and walk around and have it like alone and feel really authentic and ancient because you're going to be met with all these different packs of tour groups, tour guides, uh, tons of people from all over the world visiting the same sites as you at the same time. So it can take a little bit of the authenticity out of it, but it, don't let that sway you from coming to Egypt because yes, tourism is a big thing there, but it's so amazing and it's a must-see thing in your life. And don't let that hurt your experience of Egypt either. 
So thank you everyone for watching this video. This is my honest review of all the experiences I had while visiting Egypt for 10 days. I hope you enjoyed it and I really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe to this channel. Uh, it would mean the world to me as I try and grow and do more travel content in the future. Thank you everyone. Have a great day.